Hi everybody, Jake, your resident content cowboy here, yeehaw, and this video is all about these guys, held items. Inside of Pokemon Unite, you are given a few held items for free, and at level 9, you are able to upgrade them. Inside this video, I'm going to give you a basic overview of everything going on with held items in Pokemon Unite. Let's start with the basics. Every Pokemon is able to equip three held items, except kind of for Zacian, who has one slot dedicated to the Rusted Sword. That was meant to balance him. Ding! When you are looking at a Pokemon's held items, you can press the Y button to pull up recommended sets and sets used by top level players. Sometimes these are very good, sometimes they're quite odd and bad. An example of sort of bad right here is something like Slowbro. For whatever reason, the game thinks you should be running an Assault Vest and a Rocky Helm, and that's not really optimal for this Pokemon. In fact, both of those items have pretty low priority on every Pokemon. There are 24 different held items broken up into a few categories. Scoring, Attack, Defense, and other. What a category. That other. Right below your Pokemon's name here in Held Item Selection, it will tell you what type of Pokemon it is, so you'd want to pick items that would at least correlate to that. For instance, a Slick Spoon gives you special attack, Slowbro is special attack based, that's a good start. You can upgrade held items to level 30, but you get almost all of the benefits from upgrading held items at two points, level 10 and level 20. The reason for this is this is when these items passive skill upgrades, and that's mostly the reason you are using these items. From level one to level 10 to level 20, it increases, so the focus band recovers health equal to 8% at level one, 11% at level 10, and 14% at level 20. As you upgrade your items, it will also increase the base stats that your items give you up until level 30. As you can see here, once you have a level 30 focus band, you get 30 defense and 30 special defense. You don't really need to worry about that number. Outside of a couple items in the game, it's really not that relevant upgrading past level 20 because the bonus to stats are not very significant at all. When you start the game, I would recommend picking a few items that work very well for most Pokemon and then upgrading them to level 10 and then to level 20. You upgrade upgrade held items using item enhancers that you get for completing various activities across the game. There are tons of events inside of Pokemon Unite that are always giving you plenty of item enhancers, so don't worry about having to pick any extra up in any way. It does not cost much to upgrade your items to level 10, and not a considerable amount to get to level 20 either. From level 20 to 30, it costs a lot, but again, it's not super relevant. As you can see, every level I would upgrade this rescue hood right here, all I'm getting is two to a stat, and that is a very very small stat change. As you level up throughout the game, not only will you unlock item enhancers, you will also unlock three of these exclusive super item enhancers. Before we go any further, I implore you, wait. Do not use these super item enhancers right away. You do not need to use them. Hold on to them, please. Don't use them right away. Don't put them on leftovers or Rocky Helm or something like that. Hold on to the super item enhancers until you've played the game more. This is for a few reasons. There are some items that actually are pretty good at level 30 compared to others. I'll tell you about them in this video. And if you use a super item enhancer on something that you've already upgraded to level 20, you do not lose all of that upgrading you've been doing. They actually refund you those item enhancers. So don't jump to upgrade your items to level 30. You don't need to do it. As I mentioned before, there are tons of ways to unlock item enhancers through the battle pass, through different events. You can unlock them currently through the quick play mode, panic parade. There are lots and lots of ways to upgrade them. Don't stress out. If you just play the game daily and you complete the events, you will get tons of item enhancers. You don't need to buy them. If you wanted to see where you would purchase them, you would head into the Aos Emporium in the shops, head down to held items and you could pick up item enhancers for tickets. Again, especially starting out, I really don't think you need to do this at all. This area is also where you pick up the held items inside the game that the game does not give you. Through certain quests, you get given a handful of held items. You get leftovers, you get scope lens, shell bell, wise glasses. There are a few of them that you get. It's five or six held items that the game just gives you for free. After that, the rest can be purchased with tickets or coins. I would recommend purchasing them with tickets once you had the ability to, because you could only really buy Pokemon with either coins or gems. So I would save your coins to pick up Pokemon that you want and use tickets for item enhancers. You are also at some point given these little cutie pies, seven day max grade trial cards where you can upgrade a held item to level 30 for seven days. I don't really 
use these. I don't find much use in them in general, but if you just want to juice an item up to level 30 for a few days just to see what it looks like, you could do that too. If that stops you from spending the super item enhancer, I will definitely recommend it. I know what you're thinking. Jake, you're really cool. Thank you very much for that. And also, I don't know which held items to purchase. Well, don't you worry because I will let you know what the best ones are to start the game with and what ones to avoid altogether. This list right here is for Pokemon that are attack based. Again, under a Pokemon's name, it will tell you what type of Pokemon it is. As you can see all the way up in our S tier, we have a Focus Band, a Muscle Band, a Rapid Fire Scarf, and a Buddy Barrier. These four items, to a lesser extent the Rapid Fire Scarf, but these four items are pretty much good on any Pokemon inside the game. If I was going to just recommend a held item setup for every Pokemon in the game, it would be these top three. Focus Band, Muscle Band, Buddy Barrier. Even special attackers could do okay with this setup. These are items that you really don't have to do anything to get a ton of value out of. Focus Band is the kind of item that will heal you a few times a match once your health is low. Muscle Band does extra damage to enemy wild Pokemon and enemy Pokemon with your basic attacks. You're using basic attacks all the time. And Buddy Barrier gives you and an ally a shield when you use a Unite move. Starting out the game, if you want to get those three items to level 10 or level 20, they are very, very solid choices, especially for attackers, but also really for any Pokemon in the game. As you take a look at the tier below, it's the great, but these are a little more advanced here. The attack weight, scope lens, razor claw, weakness policy, float stone, all very good for attackers in different ways, but they're a little more advanced than the other items. There are certain Pokemon that are based around critical hits that could really use the scope lens. There are other Pokemon that are amazing when you are stacking and I'll tell you about stacking here in a moment that you would use the attack weight for and float stone is a good item that gives you increased move speed when you are out of combat I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second but in general these are a little more complex than the items above we have our B tier still got the B tier we have our C and D tier and then our bad tier the C tier are items that are kind of okay, but not super ideal, and you need to understand the game a bit more to get any value out of them. The D tier are just items that simply don't work for attackers at all, and then the bad tier are items that are just bad. Unfortunately, Leftovers, Rocky Helm, and Drain Crown are just kind of straight up bad items in the game. They just don't work well, they don't trigger when you need them to, they don't do enough. Right here we have a similar list for special attack based Pokemon, and I'll have another list for Pokemon that are more support based here in a second. Slick Spoon, Choice Specs, Focus Band, and Buddy Bearer are all insane items. If you're using special attackers a lot, something like an Espeon, a Slick Spoon is insane. It's one of the best items inside the game. It does an amount of damage that penetrates enemy special defenses, essentially. It's just really crazy good. Choice Specs help you secure last hits on lots of Pokemon by giving an extra pop of damage. Focus Band, Buddy Barrier is still great. In our A tier right here, these are also good good items, but you need to know a little bit more about them. Muscle Band still works on a lot of special attackers, but as of late, Slick Spoon has kind of taken its spot right here. Then you have Shell Bell, Wise Glasses, both good, and there's nothing wrong with them, and you get Wise Glasses and I think Shell Bell for free. So if you run those on your special attackers, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Once again, your C tier is very, very specific stuff that can work well, but you need to know a lot more about the game. Your D tier are things that just really don't work well, and then your bad tier is bad. And and Floatstone's kind of down there because it's really mostly for your attackers. And then finally, I have a list here that is more for supports and a lot of defender Pokemon. That top right there, the S tier with the Focus Band, the Buddy Barrier, and the EXP share is really, really great when you are starting with a supporter or defender. The EXP share will help you gain experience even when you are not KOing a lot of the wild Pokemon. Oftentimes supporters and defenders don't need as much experience as things like attackers and speedsters. It also makes it so when you're near an ally, if either of you KO the wild Pokemon, your ally gets the bulk of the experience and you get a little bit. It's a great way to support your team. Muscle Band still very good. This is the only time I've put something in the B tier here. Still got the B tier. And that is the Rescue Hood. There are a few Pokemon that have healing abilities inside the game that can kind of take advantage of this item. In general, it doesn't work extremely well. Then you have some items that are good if you're special attack based, like a Lapras. You have items that are good if you're attack based. And then under that, you have D tier items that are just 
still kind of wonky and difficult to use, and then items that are straight up bad all the way at the bottom. Again, for supporters and defenders, I would really recommend those top three items. They're great for that class. There are a few defenders that you might not want to run EXP share on, but in general, if you get used to using items like this, you will be very, very beneficial for your team. Let's talk about scoring items real quickly. Score shield, Aos cookie, attack weight, and special attack specs. These are all based around scoring inside the game. The score shield literally does what it says. It gives you a shield while you are scoring. This item used to be kind of broken inside the game, but it's been nerfed a couple times. And now I think it's extremely rare that you would actually need to run this item. The other three are all stacking items. These are items that give you permanent stat increases throughout the entire match every time you score. As little as one point and as many as 100 points, it will give you a stack up to a maximum of six stacks. So with special attack specs, you'll get 16 special attack, attack weight, 12 attack, and AOS cookie 200 max HP six times. After that, you could score as many times as you want, but they will not stack any further. The attack weight here is a staple item of many attack-based Pokemon. A lot of all-rounders do very well with this. Things like Lucario, Mewtwo does extremely well with this item, Buzzwole does very, very well. When you start the game, I would not recommend you start with a stacking item. It's just another layer of complexity that is very, very beneficial once you get the hang of it, but also a little tricky at first, and I think you'll sacrifice learning the fundamentals of the game too much by trying to use items like this early. Once you get the hang of everything going on in the game, you understand how to last hit tons of Pokemon, you know to show up to objectives with your team, then I would start using items like this more. Let's go through our attack-based items here really quickly. Muscle Band, great for attack-based Pokemon and a lot of special attack Pokemon that fight at range. You do extra damage to your opponents based on their remaining HP when you use your basic attacks. It's really incredible. It also gives you a bit of attack and a bit of attack speed. Okay, attack speed what to do with this. Let's talk briefly about attack speed. The problem with attack speed and the problem with some things inside of Pokemon Unite is it doesn't exactly do what it says it does. For instance, on a level 30 muscle band, it says it gives you 7.5% attack speed, which is kind of sort of true, but the way attack speed works in Pokemon Unite is kind of sort of very weird. I think the most basic way to look at attack speed inside of Pokemon Unite is let's say a Pokemon attacks one time a second. If you give it a muscle band, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to attack any faster. What you have to do is reach a certain threshold of additional attack speed, either through levels or items or emblems, and once you reach that, you start attacking a little bit faster. I would highly recommend you watch a few videos on my channel about attack speed. In general, it's kind of a mess, and it's the reason I wouldn't stress too much about attack speed and red emblems, especially at the start of the game. Just don't worry about attack speed, because it's kind of weird. You gotta reach different levels and then you actually do attack faster. Ah, it's crazy. Sculpt Lens gives your Pokemon more opportunities to critically hit. You deal more damage when you do critically hit. And then you also do additional damage after you critically hit with one of your basic attacks. It's actually really solid for some attacker and speedster Pokemon. There are a few other Pokemon that do pretty well with it also. And of course, it's really great for something like Absol that's based all around critical hits. This also happens to be one of the few items in the game that actually does benefit from getting to level 30 because the base stats it gives critical hit and critical hit damage go up and it's one of the only ways to increase those. Muscle Band also happens to be a pretty decent level 30 item because of attack speed which is again a mess. Shell Bell is not bad for special attackers. You'll get a little extra special attack and you will heal yourself after you use a move. The unfortunate thing about this item is you can proc this item so that it would use its effect when you're at full HP. So there are times that you just aren't taking advantage of this. Wise Glasses increases the special attack your poke. <clears throat> Wise Glasses increases the special attack of your Pokemon, and it's decent for some special attackers. However, Slick Spoon and Choice specs are definitely better almost all the time. It's because of how damage is calculated inside Pokemon Unite, which is a big conversation, but just take my word for it. Energy Amplifier will help you charge your Unite move a little bit faster, and it will also help you deal increased damage for a short time after using your Unite move. A pretty cool item, actually, but I would say it's a little more advanced 
than kind of starting out the game. And there are only a few Pokemon that do really, really well with it. In general, as a beginner, I would stay away from this item. Razor Claw is a really interesting item. It lets you do extra damage after you use a move. So for instance, you are a Pokemon like Cinderace, you flame charge and then you use an attack. You deal an extra little pop of damage with your Razor Claw after you use that move and then you hit with a basic attack. Also, if the Pokemon is melee, they happen to slow the enemy after they use a move and hit them with a basic attack. There's a lot going on. As you can see, it's a pretty big wall of text right there. I really, really like Razor Claw on a lot of Pokemon. It's also a little more advanced. Choice Specs, great item for special attackers. It lets you do an extra bit of damage. I think it's on an internal cooldown of eight seconds or something like that every time you hit with a move. So every eight seconds, you'll use a move like Psyshock on Espeon, and you'll get an extra burst of damage based on your special attack. It's a pretty solid item, and it helps you secure a lot of last hits for your special attackers. Rapid Fire Scarf is great, and it's super easy to use. After you've hit with three basic attacks with your Pokemon, so let's say you're Greninja, and you're hitting with three basic attacks from range, you kind of get this little burst of attack speed for a moment here. As you can see, this says a 30% boost in attack speed for a short time. It's just a little sort of steroid that your Pokemon takes pretty often inside of a match to increase their attack speed. Really good for a lot of attackers, especially ranged attacker Pokemon like Cinderace, Duraludon, Decidueye, things like that. Drain Crown sounds good, but is bad. Restores HP equal to 10% of damage dealt with attack-based basic attacks. There are not many Pokemon that can take advantage of this item. It doesn't heal you enough. It doesn't work against shields. It's just kind of a mess, unfortunately. Stay away from Drain Crown. Slick Spoon for special attackers is probably the best item in the game, allowing you to ignore 20% of your opponent's special defense. This just helps you deal tons more damage inside of a match, and it's basically created an entire meta around it. Slick Spoon is so incredibly powerful that it made special attackers a thing, which is pretty cool. Rusted Sword only works for Zacian. It's just sort of an item spot where he can't use anything. So now Zacian's balanced. Focus Ban we talked about earlier, kind of a get out of jail free card and heals you a few times when you are low on HP. I think at level 20, it has about a 70 to 80 second internal cooldown. You'll actually see it tick on the bottom right corner of your map. So you'll know when your Focus Band is up or down. Amazing item on pretty much anyone. Leftovers, good in other Pokemon games, terrible in this Pokemon game. They give you it for free. It's an item that works when you're not in combat, I think for four seconds, which by the way, means not only not fighting an enemy, but also not fighting wild Pokemon. This item is rarely useful and it doesn't heal you enough. Stay away from leftovers. Assault Vest grants you a pretty chunky shield based on 15% of your max HP, and it will protect you from special attacks. There are a few weird things about this item that make me not really recommend it to anyone. Unfortunately, heading into a match, you don't know how many special attackers are going to be on the other team, so sometimes this item is completely useless, and it also just doesn't seem to be up enough to provide enough value. I would stay away from the Assault Vest. Rocky Helmet is absolutely terrible. This item works in a very weird way. I have another video showing it, but you have to take a certain amount of damage in a single move for this item to output a bit of damage to Pokemon around you. It's just a disaster. Stay away from Rocky Helmet. Weakness policy is listed here under defensive items, and I understand it does give you some HP, but this is really set up for certain attack-based Pokemon to get a little extra percentage to their attack stat when they are inside of a fight. There are Pokemon like your Shifu that can use this pretty well, Mewtwo can use this pretty well, and this is a decent option if you're not looking to use a stacking item on a Pokemon, but just wanna be a little more powerful once you're inside of a fight. You then have the other section here, the the float stone. The float stone gives you increased move speed when you're out of combat. Once again, that not only means not hitting an enemy Pokemon, but also not hitting any wild Pokemon. I actually really love this item. They buffed it a little while back so that you get the move speed a little bit faster. But in general, it's uh, it's a more advanced item that requires a little bit more 
of an advanced play style, I would say. Buddy Bearer is an insanely good item, especially for new players. You use a Unite move, you grant yourself and an ally a shield based on 25% of your max HP, especially for defenders and supporters. This item is amazing because you usually have a lot of HP with those Pokemon. And this is one of those items that you don't have to think about and it always provides value to you and your team. A very solid beginner item. EXP share we talked about a little bit earlier. The gist of this item is it helps an ally that you're in lane with gather more experience. You would never want to run this if you're a central area Pokemon, and you really only want to run this on supporters and defenders. And then we have the Rescue Hood, which sounds pretty good, increasing the recovery effect by 10% and the shield effect by 10% when you give them to allies. It just doesn't seem to do that much. In fact, a lot of Pokemon that heal allies could be better off running things like special attack specs or wise glasses or even choice specs to give you a little extra special attack which affects your healing and helps you secure more last hits on wild pokemon unfortunately this item is a little undertuned so there you have it i think once you're starting pokemon unite that's about everything you need to know about held items they do make a pretty huge difference and i think if you follow my guide you pick out a couple of the best ones and put them on most of your pokemon to start you can worry about everything else going on inside a game of pokemon unite before you stress too much about min maxing all of your held items if you're looking for specific held item builds you can check out other videos on my channel or you can head over to a website like unitedb.com that has a lot of great builds set up for tons of different pokemon thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope this helped if it did like comment subscribe if it didn't you know what like comment subscribe anyway goodbye everybody mm -hmm. Yeehaw.